I'm here in Skodak Landing, New York on a very windy spring day to look at artist Matt Hart and his amazing metal sculptures. Let's go. I work with metal, I do sculpture, railing, signs, um, anything custom. I like to do things that haven't been done before, so I, I tend to make a lot of my projects harder than they need to be. So I started Hardest Metals, that's my business, um, custom creation, sculpture, design, and function in 2007. And I, you know, focused on nature, meaning when I make railings, I like the balustrades to be natural, not symmetrical. Uh, we did a giant butterfly. That one commemorated the Carner butterfly, which was really nice. I went to the library, then went up to the Pine Bush Preserve. That one's still there, I like that. Growing up, my father was in the sheet metal fabrication union, and um, I got in, started sweeping the floors and tinkering with little pieces, and I remember my foreman and my coworkers used to say, oh, Matt, you need to be in you know Napa Valley making little funky sculptures, so that naturally led to playing with scraps and welding things together. The Albany Underground Artist was a good movement, um, that guild, and that was very inspiring, so that got me into a group of artists making different things than what we were making in the fab shops. One of the first big sculptures Dad and I made was the, um, the Space Bass Man, that rock and roll guitar player um, that's downtown Broadway in the windows now, but that opened our eyes, opened the doors. People would say it's a dying trade, you know, the metal world. Um, and I just, I saw a window. And I like the idea of functionality. So you could make um, an artistic sculptural table, but it's functional, people can set stuff on it. So that, that functionality really um, got me excited. The whole time I was working on all those pieces, I knew it wasn't it. I was still searching and looking. The forge fly are these new fly fishing sculptures. My experience at the shows when people walk around, I hear a lot of, I've never seen this before, holy, how did you do this? And that is just fueling my fire. All these years I've been waiting and looking and praying for something that hasn't been made before. Um, and these forge flies were, were just it. So I make the sculptures of the flies that we use um, to catch the trout. The, the mayflies have a life cycle. They start as a nymph underwater and then they emerge and they pop their wings and they fly and they drop their eggs. So there's a few stages of their life and um, we create them out of copper, stainless, steel. Trying to get the metals to imitate all these fluffy and intricate fibers of the fly tying world. This is one of my favorite techniques um, that I've ever done in my life. This is the imitation of the hackle. So when we tie the flies with the um, saddle hackle feather and you wrap this around the hook shank, the feathers splay out. So this here, this is, you know, and I love it when people walk up to these because they, wow, how did you do that? But it also looks like uh, we weld each one on individually. And this has come through a, a long process of figuring out how to do this. But when I figured out how to do this, I was, I was like a kid in the candy store. So this here, we, we literally create half of one of these feathers and then wrap it around the hook shank so this splays out. So a lot of the techniques that we use for the forge fly is actually very similar to the world of fly tying. And I think that really, um, people in the sport really connect with that. This has gotta be in one of my top three favorite pieces I've ever made. Um, just because of this part right here. Um, this was over 10 foot of a saddle hackle feather I wrapped and stacked and then trimmed. And when you tie the actual, uh, it's called spun deer hair. 
So when you spin the deer hair, then you shave it with a razor blade on the flies, and it leaves these little nubs. And this here, um, I just, I can't believe this came out. This is still one of those pieces, and I made it three years ago, but every time I look at it, I'm like, how, when, and who? <laughs> The forge fly, there's no end to the, the possibilities and combinations of colors and materials are probably endless. I'll probably be making forge fly sculptures till, I'm, till the end of time. Guiding and teaching fly fishing and making the sculptures, that goes hand in hand. Um, it's kind of a dream come true.